Hi, Stylist Asian community. My name is Philip Patient, and I'm a freelance VFX artist. I was a former intern at Unity Technologies, and I wanted to go over how I created this effect in Unity HDRP. So we will see what process I came up with to create it, from reference gathering to the final video. Let's dive into it. There are several steps to get to the final result of this effect, because uh, the first thing to know if you're new to effect is that a VFX is a combination of game design and art, uh, basically. Uh, and technical stuff, of course, but <laughs> yeah. What you want to do is to check with your game designers uh, what intentions they want to give with a given effect. For example, if you make a fire, a fireball, uh, is it a, a fire to guide the player or is it a fire to scare the player away so he doesn't go this way? The intention behind an effect is at the core of the look of the effect. So my intention with this VFX, what do I want to communicate with it? There are many parameters to consider before diving in. What is the kind of game I'm producing this effect for? Is it an offensive, defensive spell? Is it viewed from a first person or third person perspective? So step two is to gather references. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward, as we want to recreate an existing effect. I dived into the game and I recorded some videos to serve me as references. As you can see, I used, uh, I tried to make the weirdest angles for the effect so I can see uh, the effect as a, as a whole. And I wanted to see it from below, I wanted to see it uh, from above as well. So uh, I wanted to have plenty of references, but it's very easy to do when it is in a game. So I analyzed the effect once again and broke it down into three parts. It is composed of an anticipation of the missile coming to the ground, then the bomb rapidly expands, and finally it, it is expanded and it is a, a sphere now. It is blocking the vision. I also took some references from other effects or other natural phenomena because one thing to keep in mind when doing VFX is that 90% of the time we are representing natural elements, natural forces, liquids, fire, wind. So I took several screenshots that greatly helped me for the next part, which is the layout. So the goal is to recreate the bulk of the effect, to lay down the foundation and leave space to some more subtle details later on. This will allow us to think about the architecture of our effect and get the timing of the effect right, because an effect needs to feel good. So in Unity, I created this fairly basic particle system without any shader and divided them into anticipation, expanding, and expanded. I did so much uh, frame by frame just to get the timing right of the effect, and I tweaked some values as well. The goal here is to make it look as pleasant and smooth as possible to the human eye. The two main values to tweak here are the lifetime and the delay. How long an element stays on screen and when are very strong parameters to take into account to make everything feel as smooth and right as possible. Another key element to make everything feel nice and smooth, what I mean by this is natural, make it feel organic, make it feel like it is coming from real life, is the linearity of a parameter. You should always try to put non-symmetrical and non-linear curves into your particle systems. There is not so often perfectly linear movement in real life, so it will probably look very synthetic and very computer-like. What we want is to make it look like it was made by a human person. If you look at the vid video of a waving flag, you will see that it is not a perfectly perfect movement. It, it has its own micro variations sometimes, but there is still variations. And this is what I want to do by putting this kind of weird curves. And yeah, once I got my layout and architecture right, I move on to the shaders and texturing, uh, which is like the heavier part, the more technical part of uh, the visual effects. So step four, shaders and textures. Uh, the texture we use in our effect will define very strongly its style. For example, two effects may use the same technical principle, but may look very different or in a completely different style. If you compare two fire, for example, Breath of the Wild and Overwatch, you may see some similarities, but there are very two very distinct styles. In our layout, we already use big and clear shapes, which is a step towards Valorant stylization. But the big work is ahead of us. I think that a nice example of hand-painted texture for this effect is the texture of the main smoke bomb. 
I analyzed the technical aspect of this texture. It will be used in a shader, which will slide the texture to the right or left. So the texture will need to be tileable. What I mean by tileable is that I can offset its UVs and I will never see a seam. So this is very basic brushwork. Uh, nothing fancy here, just a basic hard brush and a little bit of a little bit of smoothing. So once my details are done and I'm happy with it, I start to play around with blend modes, levels and contrast. I try to get a nice and readable hand painted looking texture to stay within the, the stylized boundaries while still having some interesting grayscale values that will please the eye, catch it and make it look more complex overall. So here is a technique that a Riot employee shared on the amazing forum Realtime VFX. Uh, you can use a motion blur to introduce some movement to your texture. And I use it in my texture just to give it that, that, that bit of movement that I needed. And once I'm done with it, I save it as a TJ and import it inside Unity. Here you can see the final result that I came up with. So I played around with levels, I played around with a gradient map as well. I did this effect on Unity HDRP. So I'll be using Shader Graph, but basically any node based shader editor will do the job perfectly. From now on, I'm going to be more Unity specific, so you can still follow along if you're an uh, Unreal Engine 4 user, for example. There will be differences, but the principles are the same. It is very easy to create the shader that we need for this effect, because if you look at it, it is only a texture which is sliding across a sphere. You, we can isolate it, so you can see. Basically, for this effect, what I did is to put lots of layers upon layers, <laughs> upon layers. Uh, it's a very layered effect. Uh, there is many parts to it, as you can see. Um, but yeah, what I want to do for this kind of... It, it is very easy once you look at it. You can see my final texture that I showed you earlier. As you can see, I just make it go from left to right. So this is not a shader graph tutorial per se, but um, I'm going to show you a very simple way. This is not the most optimized, of course. Um, this is not the best, but this is a way of achieving this um, rotating texture effect. So you only need your texture, which is here. So you can drag and drop your texture or create a simple texture node and add the texture from here. But as I say, simplicity. <laughs> uh, and then, as you know, UVs are used to project a texture onto a surface. So what we want to do here is to tweak our UVs so that they are pushed over time. What I mean by push is in technical terms an offset. Uh, here we can create a node which is called tiling and offset and we can plug it into our UVs. Nothing changed and this is very normal. But now look at what happens if I try to move the offset, for example, on the X axis. So this is basically what we want. But we don't want to, by hand, change the value. Uh, what we want to do is to, if that it moves over time. So very simply, we are going to create a vector2, which we are going to plug in our offset. Because here you can see it's a, a docked vector2, basically. We want to replace that. We want to override it. So we're going to drop a time node. The time node is going to give the, the time of the Unity engine. So, and we want to plug it in our x-axis. This is exactly what we want. I'm using a non lit master node because in some cases we want our particles to use the environment and the shading of what is around us. But in this example, and as I analyzed it, uh, Valorant uh, particles are unlit, which means that they don't receive any intensity, any light intensity from the sun or any indirect lighting. And this is a very good way of saving performances. If we took a plane, if we created the material and uh, we put our shader in it, as you can see, this is doing exactly what we want. I made a, a bigger shader for the final effect, just wanted to have lots of options and I also have to take care of the transparency. If you want a very quick transparency, you can always just put your shader to transparent and the blending mode to additive. What it is going to do, basically, what is white is going to be seen, and what is black is not going to be seen. 
So this is my Uber shader that you can see on the right. Uh, I experimented with uh, the speed of sets, the blending mode. There's a lot of tests to do when creating an effect. From here, I just adjust existing parameters or add more if I'm not satisfied with the level of control that I have on my shader. Uh, as a whole, this is a very artistic effect, not a very technical one. Step 5 is uh, the final touch of your effect, basically. It's cinematic and post-processing. For the final touch, I created a timeline within Unity uh, and orchestrated all the events I needed here. I control the timing of the effect with a very simple control track, which allows to preview a visual effect over the time. This is a must-know to create juicy effects. As you can see, as I move the slider of the timeline here, you can see my effect. This is not perfect, but it's already a nice preview. So once I got the timing of the global effect right in my timeline, I experiment with post-processing. My go-to post-processing effects are um, vignettes, which creates a nice cinematic black border around the camera, and blue, which creates a nice halo for values above a certain threshold in our final image. This will allow us to create a nice aesthetically pleasant result. I use motion blur when I can, but this effect can link to some unwanted artifacts due to the lack of motion vectors. And once everything is set up and working, I use the Unity Recorder package, which you can find in the Package Manager of Unity. I use the Unity Recorder package to get a final high-quality video. You can find this package in the Package Manager under Preview Packages. When the high-quality recording is done, I can freely post it on our station and other platforms alike. Always keep in mind your intentions. Get nice references, Take references from other games, but also from nature. Uh, lay out a quick and rough approximation of your shapes and timing. Take time, because texture is a, can be a slow process, especially at the beginning. It's a very long to learn, it's almost like... I can only recommend for our hand-painted texture the work and the tutorials of Jason Kaser, which is a Riot employee. He makes some amazing tutorials. He worked at Riot Game for 10 years, so he knows what he's saying. Again, I'm preaching a bit, but... If you want to get started uh, into visual effects, I can only recommend the Freetime VFX website. It's a small community, but uh, everyone is so helpful there. They can give you feedback, they can tell you where to start. And if you don't know where to start, it is super nice. I just wanted to thank Thomas from Stellar Station, which contacted me to do this breakdown, and I'm super pleased that he did. That he did. I hope you will learn something in my video. So thank you for listening to me. I'm Philip Patient, a freelance technical VFX artist, and see you.